This is the um, starboard wing or the right wing of the SU5A. Now, until now, everything has gone together with these wings quite well. But this one doesn't quite fit. I've had to adjust this here to make these line up with the gaps there. And this one, I've done nothing with at all. I fitted it there and it doesn't quite line up. So it just goes to show you to double check everything uh, because if they don't line up you're going to end up with a warped wing. So I'm just going to take a little bit out of there. Just a little shavy. About to break it. Yeah, I hope not. Anyway, just goes to show you a little bit of patience will pay off. Okay, let's see if that will line up now. Oh, it's got to go a little bit more. Take that, get out of the way of the camera. Nice as well. I'll fluff up my model just so you can laugh at it. Which is your right, of course. <clears throat> there you go. That's a lot better. Now, a word of caution. The upper wings up to here pretty much the same except as the bottom wings except you've got struts coming up from the bottom wing to the top wing and so you're going to have R2R rib which has these little ply doublers on which allow the struts from the fuselage to come up to the wing root you will also get uh, the same with R4. Now, as previously mentioned, it's always best to mark everything before you start this model because, especially with these, good example here with these ply doublers for the outer struts, they are cut to go just below the surface of that top rib so it's important to make sure you mark these up and remember for some reason that's marked teg there and that one's marked leg even though they're both diamond shaped uh, or whatever shape you want to call it that's the way they're marked. So you've got to take those things into consideration. Read the plan. Read the instructions. Because if you glue this all together and you've cocked it up and you ain't noticed, you're going to have a problem. So, getting these now lined up. And I'm not going to bore you with building the whole thing, but... Uh, there you go, that one fits in quite neatly. Now I have these uh, notice board pins here. The reason I'm using them is to force the wing flat. So when I come to glue the joint, it's a flat joint. And of course then all I have to do, any inconsistencies, I can just rub them down. So. This will also help to stop the wing from warping. You really don't want a wing to warp. So, got R2R here with the ply doublers either side. That will go in there. As so, hopefully. Ooh, it's always harder when you've got the camera in front of you. Be gentle and patient and it should drop into place. Make sure that the 
front of that rib lines up correctly with the leading edge there. Okay, so now you've got those two ribs in, everything's starting to line up. It looks like it's lining up anyway. Now you're going to need seven R1 ribs, which I have cut out and lightly sanded, and they should, well, <laughs> should drop in. Now there's leg, the leg is in the corner there. That's quite important and I want to show you something more about that a bit later and you just gently 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 without forcing it drop it in there you go don't force them for goodness sakes all right and I'll carry on with that in just a minute so Here's the port wing, or the left wing. Here's one I prepared earlier. Now what I have done, I've put some strengtheners in, in the corners, and especially where the struts go. Yes, it add a little bit of weight, you know, so 0.1001 grams or whatever it is, but it's adding strength and you need strength. These are very fragile wings. And if you are trimming these out and just on your maiden flight, you you cut this wing, you know, you're gonna wish you put extra strength in it. So I've added this, 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 and this. Now, why have I done that? Well, it's, yes, I'm, I've done it just to add extra strength, but also I'm gonna be cutting out here the aileron now there's no servo goes in the top wing the servos in the bottom wing and you have a rod that comes up here which will activate the top aileron, uh, aileron okay so that's what i'm doing and i've thought ahead a little bit on that so just to remind you where we are here's the first bottom wing that i did obviously that's not very well lined up here it is now and you can see I've added strengtheners here as well and added all this in and yes it's going to add weight but the payoff is you get a highly aerobatic aeroplane which is what you want for a World War I fighter so obviously I've got to you know, make this a little bit more beautiful but that's what we're looking at and that's where we want to be so I've added here a little hook, if you like, which would go connect the rod to the top aileron, which is worked by that servo. So you've got two aileron, ailerons working at the price of one servo. There are other ways of doing this, but this is the way I'm doing it. And uh, we'll see what happens next. So I'm going to put this wing together now and I'll show you how I'm doing it. It's not worth me filming that because you'll just get bored with it, but you can see the final result once I've done it. And then we come to the center section, which I will build, but I'm not going to attach these wings to the center section until I have cut out the ailerons and made the ailerons then I'll put it together I may decide to cover it before I do I don't know yet I haven't decided but let's see how the wing turns out there you go for now so the update you need to pin this center section for the wings pin it down and pin it down properly now obviously you can use these type of pins but I use those pins and I use notice board pins you can probably see I poured a bit of wood out there with this and pin it down absolutely flat now there's a bit of a complication with this center section the the drawings are probably more helpful than the instructions I, I, I would suggest because this 
P3R and 3RL, you have to take this top spar out. So for goodness sakes, don't glue it. And then pop that rib in and then clamp the pair of them together. Okay. Once this is all dry. So in other words, when you put this center section together, everything is loose. It's not tight fitting. So what they're saying to you in the instructions is don't glue anything, pin it together and then bring each half of the wings together in the center. Put these um, spaces in, which is uh, DH1 and DH2. Put them in either side so you get the dihedral and this is all still loose and it's a heck of a game getting it all to jiggle in while it's still loose because it wants to fall apart all the time anyway so you can't get it absolutely bang on and square plus having this at the top of the drawing is problematic they need to have it at either in the middle of the drawing which would be better or the bottom so unless you've got a table where you can all swing it around read everything upside down because you know you're just you're just messing around and messing around and messing around anyway so after a lot of fiddling around taking this top beam out and this top beam out jiggling your, your ribs in together then putting them back yeah doesn't make it all nice and solid it's just as loose as before so now you have to get your clamps and clamp everything in and even then once I glued it all in and I thought everything was square you turn it over and things are not you know as good as what they could be so so much for laser cutting bit disappointed with that part that that could have been made easier I think in my humble opinion anyway so it's in one piece you've got to put these little pieces make these out the spruce either side on C L C S C R one I would put the no it says in the instructions build it all up put this on last now I I'd, I'd, I'd put these on before you put it all together it's just going to be too fiddly but what it's worth this is just to hold the the Lewis gun on top of the wing and that's its only purpose so you just use leftovers uh, spars and just glue them either side there um, just be careful what you're doing I made the mistake of putting these uh, ply doublers on each side of this rib here R2R I think it is and I had to prise them off to put them on this side of this uh, rib which is R3R that's the only mistake really I made there put my hands up to that but well, I think what I will be doing is I'll be putting in more legs to strengthen all of this up because I'm, I'm just I'm just not happy with it you can see that there's gaps here where where the the ribs go in they shouldn't be that big these these are not being cut out very well if I'm being truthful um, but this showing you this here close up now that gives you a better idea and of course all the struts go in here and here and here and here so having this to look at before you start doing this is a very good idea. Read the instructions closely because they want you to put these um, ribs at a certain angle despite having these on each end of your wing tips. So read it, read it again, cut everything out and then read it again. It, it, which, you, which you've absorbed it, 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 it's not that complicated. But if you've not done it, 
you think, oh, how's that relate to that? And then all of a sudden it sort of comes together. But it doesn't become obvious until you've put it together. And I, don't, I would suggest that, you know, you're going to do a lot of sanding down as well. I had to do a lot of sanding down here. Um, and I just thought it was going to be easier than this, if I'm being truthful. There is a complimentary uh, video that um, James makes on their website and on YouTube for this. And he makes this first, which I think is a mistake. You need to make the wings first and then this last, which actually follows the instructions. So looking at this chap on YouTube from the Vintage Model Co, just use it as a guide and nothing else because I don't think that everything he's done there is absolutely correct. And I think he's a bit blase with the glue as well, if I'm being honest. I think using this, this quick setting five second glue is a big mistake. You need time to get things in and then let it set. So, you know, by all means, use your zap glue, but you don't want it drying in five seconds. You'll end up with your fingers stuck to it and you'll end up breaking it, frankly, if I'm being honest. Anyway, moving swiftly on from my moaning and mumbling, or a mumbling and a moaning. So, for those of you who are still interested in putting the ailerons in, uh, once this is all together, carefully cut this out. Carefully, carefully cut the ribs. And I've made up the aileron. Now, I've not gone to so much trouble with the top ailerons because there's no servo in there. The, you know, all you need to do really is put the little link in here at the bottom there, which I will do presently. I just want to make the other side up first before I do all that. And that's basically what you end up with. So put get one of your R1s that are left over or you've made a copy of because I think somewhere in my video I said make a copy and then use that as a template stick it on the end there I think this is uh, 1 8 uh, balsa and you cut that to shape and these are already there obviously um, and that, that's all you really need you just need you know the hook in the middle there which I will do presently because that's going to take me a little bit of time there because I'm going to make two of these now you don't need to do any more more than that then put your hinges in okay just make sure you square them up nicely and they should <laughs> says so should of course every time I do something on, on camera it mucks up but basically they should slot in and there you go how about that first time yeah so you're going to end up with that and then of course you've got to do the other side, which I've not done yet. Actual fact, that's a, that's a blooming good fit, actually. I'm quite oh, I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, uh, so I'll do the other side, and I'll do the hooks. Um, I will do something very quickly on video about the hooks. Um, a little bit fiddly, but it's not not you know not outside your school level. And then it's just sand everything. Make sure there's no, you know, sharp bits or bits of glue sticking up and tidy it all up and everything nice and smooth for covering. Then after that, if I remember where I put them, you have to make a jig. And there's two sides. Now they do, there we go, come over here. You've got a right hand and a left hand, so you have to part cal one or car one so what you do you put these on here pin it down and there are some lines here and you stick on parts cal two cal three cal four cal five and then coming over to this side got the same thing here so that's what I did that fits in there at least it should do so that's the opposite side so you should end up with a right and a left now this jig is to basically line up your top wing when you come to put it onto the fuselage 
So I made these up ready while I was waiting for the glue to dry for the uh, centre section of the wings there. So that's all ready to go. So it's right because it's standing up on its own. So we'll come back to that as well. So that's where we are at. So I've got to do the sailor on here. Got to make all that up yet. Yeah. That one looks absolutely spot on. I only got to put the hook in and then I will come back to you.